Hi guys, welcome back to another S7 video. And today's video, I'm going to show you how you can easily overclock your Galaxy S7 and make it even faster than a OnePlus 3. So of course, I'm running no good over here. But if you have not hit the no good and if you want to full performance out of your Galaxy S7, I will recommend to download Renovate Edge. It's one of the most deep loaded and uh, most optimized ROMs ever. And uh, now that you have done it, just install the kernel. Let's just go to the recovery. Both of the links will be in the description down below for the kernel and the ROM. As you can see, we are putting into the recovery now. Let's just go to the install. No need to wipe anything. Here is the kernel. The kernel name is Apollo version 1. And this is the most overclockable kernel you will ever find. That this kernel like almost boosts up the uh, clock speed of 2.3 gigahertz to straight up 2.9 gigahertz. And, and my device never like crashed at all and never it got that more too much hit up due to the overclock which is a great thing. Because uh, this phone easily can handle anything at this point because the scores which we are going to get is, is just unbelievable. Next, yep, no story. You get the Super SU. Just uh, select Super SU because you will need uh, root in order to control the uh, clocks. As you can see, you can adjust the medium frequency. I will guess the maximum one. It would be good. 1.89 would be unstable as you can see. But uh, for my use, I have been using this since last night and the device has not given me any kind of issues. Mongoose frequency to the stock, of course. You can also scale up the other Mongoose cores to the 2.9 gigahertz. It is just stable. But if you're going to use this for a daily driver, not for this one stunt, I will recommend to stay over here 2.5 to 2.6 and then underclock it. Because in terms of gaming, this will be a beast by now. As you can see, just said here. Now, hot plugs, I wouldn't recommend. Uh, I just uh, recommend to keep a stock plug, but there is no way to uh, disable hot plugs over here. So, I will recommend for the maximum ones. Then, afterwards, you can underclock it, set the GPU to the maximum. Now, I will not recommend to touch anything over here. The kernel will be installed, and the first boot will be very awkward. The device will keep on rebooting and rebooting. You don't need to wipe anything, it's just a part of the device because we are changing the RAM disk and everything. As you can see the kernel installation has been completed let's hit the next finish there you go swipe to unlock just reboot the system right away now on the first boot the device will give too much hiccups and you might find that device is unstable yes on the first boot it might get some it will boot it will again crash boot crash and it took five to ten minutes as you can see it's now booting but it will crash once as you can see it's stuck over there but it's just totally fine so on this time of the boot, it just crashed only once which is a very awesome thing because we have set the clocks to the highest because sometimes if the cores hit to the maximum frequency of their uh, limit, they just crash but as you can see, you have to download a snaps app from the play store, it's just free and only 200 KB. Open snaps, grant all the root permissions, as you can see snaps has been loaded, everything is working just fine. Now slide down to the right, you get the core uh, frequency, you can set it to the maximum because we are doing some uh, benchmarking right now, you can set it over here to the 1 GHz minimum, overclock your other cores to the maximum too. This is for just the sake of overclocking, I will not recommend to do on this a daily basis. CPU govern the performance, A3 perf performance, everything on performance mode. Now for the multi-core HMP, you have to just select for the performance. I will recommend to turn it off back again because the device might get a bit too hot in sometimes uh, during ideal works. And due to that not some debacle, I will not even recommend to uh, turn everything on at the same time. And if you turn everything down to the 1 gigahertz and set everything on power saving, you can't even imagine how what kind of battery life it gets. But uh, you can't really use it for gaming. But if you're uh, doing your usual tasks, you can basically set a profile for a battery and a performance which would be very good or GPU you can set it for the booster the GPU load to the 95% because uh, if the GPU loads to the 100% the UI might crash and you can't even like complete the antidote score so that would be very hard now over in this kernel you don't get the storage scheduler to the fee up so you can't really change anything over here network you can set it to the westward westward is a bit faster and a good part of this rom if you manage uh, like to connect a usb cd rom you can also read that with this kernel which is just amazing thing but i don't know where you can get a portable usb cd driver just a whole bunch of settings and now that we have completed everything let's just clean the ram once let the device cool down a bit and let's just head on to the benchmark here it is and to do benchmark let's just test it again
so the results are here and I did a such a huge mistake during the Android benchmark I didn't turn on my Wi-Fi so this benchmark was basically done without the internet and you can get more score with the internet on so let's just take a look at the score 150k on the Exynos version of Galaxy S7 Edge. Would you believe that? Cause some of the not so custom ROMs on the S Snapdragon version of the S7 can make this score uh, happen cause they are the uh, Snapdragon versions with the Vulcan API fully working on but the Exynos version nah. They only score about 132k to 128k. Even if they are hot like uh, right now it's a bit hot cause we have of, co of course overclocked our device. So if you cool down the device for a bit, uh, clear the RAM and turn on the Wi-Fi, you will get more than 153k score which is above a OnePlus 3 uh, which is just amazing because we, all, uh, all, we also have a 2k display over here. I will do the same test again and the score will be in the thumbnail of this video so we, you will find out how it works but as you can see over here it's in the top 7 of the category iPhone 7 plus which I am currently using iPhone 7 plus the winner which I am currently using for recording this video is the top best 183k I mean these scores are still pretty low my iPhone 7 like scores around 186k which is just blazingly fast but still the fastest uh, portable device is the Apple's iPad Pro which scores around 200k and right now the upcoming fastest device is, is the Xiaomi Mi 6 which also scores around 210k like S7 is no comparison for that kind of performance but as you can see we are in the top list here are some Chinese phones over here here is the Mi 5 Plus, Mi 5 S Plus, Vivo X5 we are uh, almost above everything like Mi Mi Note 2 is also behind us the iPhone 6s Plus of course as you can see over here here is the Snapdragon version of the S7 we are far ahead but still image UX process the Qualcomm one has a better image processor with the Sony one here as we get the Samsung one, not that powerful so we get the score a bit better on the snapdragon version hope you guys enjoyed please subscribe to the channel for more galaxy s7 videos i will be uploading more mods like this thanks for watching peace